and the other half of So very well. Thank you for being here. Now, it was unveiled. It was formerly known as Black Boy Lane, but on Monday they officially uh, unveiled the new sign, renamed it, and just 24 hours after that unveiling, the sign was vandalised and people on the street, uh, in an act of dissent, uh, have been putting up a copy of the original sign in their windows. They're clearly not happy that the name has been changed. The council has cleaned up the sign overnight, so they've removed the graffiti from the sign. And joining me now is Nels Abbey, a writer and broadcaster who lives in the area. Good morning, Nels. Good morning, Salma. How are you? Lovely and cheery. I like that. That is what we like to hear on The Breakfast Show. Very well. Thank you for being here, Nels. This is quite an extraordinary story that has unfolded. When we thought it had ended, there was another chapter. What is, uh, what's your take on, on people scratching out the sign yesterday? I think there's a broader issue going on here about um, the, just the scratching out the sign. The scratching out the sign is a foul thing to do. John LaRose was a great man. I'm very familiar with the LaRose family um, I, 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 for a range of different reasons. Of course, I'm a writer and um, black, um, New Beacon books have been really, really good to me. And um, I really appreciate everything they do and that John did too. And that's the bookshop, of course. That's the bookshop, of course, which John LaRose founded in in the 60s. I think there's a broader, a much broader and important issue here about what's going on in Haringey and about Haringey Council. Haringey is this very, very uniquely strange place in London that it is, and I'm not using this word lightly, it is truly a segregated bar. One half of it is white and wealthy, and the other half of it is diverse and quite economically challenged. On the diverse and economically challenged side, there are significant antisocial behaviour issues, significant crime issues. There is a proliferation of betting shops. On the wealthy side, there's about six betting shops across the whole half of the borough. On the poorer side, there's about 65. There are significant hygiene issues. Outside the Bernie Grant Arts Centre, there is a there is a mass infestation of rats. If you be walking the street, you might see six or seven, eight rats, which is just shocking. There are a proliferation of what I believe are very, very clearly money laundering fronts. Um, and additionally, right now, the council, against everyone's objections, have installed these lower traffic neighbourhoods, or LTNs as they call them, which have increased congestion, traffic, pollution, and have been poisonous to community co- uh, cohesion. What the traffic, what the council then gives um, the people of Haringey are these very, very empty symbolic gestures, which no one really wants, um, which no one really wants. There are significant issues that need to be resolved, that need to be resolved urgently, but what we tend to get are these symbolic situations such as the change of a black boy, black boy lane to um, John, to um, LaRose, um, to LaRose lane. Now, I, I, love, I love everything that John LaRose stood for, but I think in the hierarchy of everything that Haringey has to deal with, in terms of actual substance of everything Haringey has to deal with, which is actually an emergency on the, on the east side of the borough, which is a segregated borough, segregated by, by a high road, um, it's, it's a nothing burger. It has nothing whatsoever to do to improve the lives of the people who live there. And that's where part of the frustration is coming from. I totally condemn the person who crossed it out. I think it might have been driven by racial hostility. But I think on a, uh, everything, I think on a more broader issue or so, Haringey Council has to take a, long, a strong look in the mirror and really figure out why did they get into, into local government for that. What, what, what are they actually trying to achieve here? Because mm-hmm. if, if the church purpose to actually just chase clout and create headlines or so, they're doing a fantastic job. If it's to improve the lives of local people in Haringey, they are failing woefully. Well, Nels, you, we, we know that the council, well, the cost of, of changing the street name was around £180,000, which is a huge amount. And this is what a lot of the residents have brought up again and again. We spoke to one resident of the street this morning who's put up a sign in his in his window on his home saying Black Boy Lane, clearly showing he's opposed to it. He said he thought it was pathetic that the council had spent £180,000. It was a complete waste of money. Nels, you're also a black man. You've written on race. Your book, Think Like a White Man. You know, you are also someone who comes from a community of people who many people from that community are absolutely in favour of the sign. And like you said, the Rose Bookshop, you know, there is a, there's a long history there. I want to ask you, do you think the council should have spent that £180,000 on other things before getting to name changes? 
Of course I do. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's completely absurd. But I think it's very, very in line with what Harringay Council does. This is pretty much what, this is how they perform business, essentially. They do things, what it would appear to, from my perspective. And I, I'm sure some of, these people, some of the people on the council, I get, to, I, would get, I do get along with. I do have some degree of admiration for some of them. But as a unit, they are performing in a very, very in a way that leaves me baffled far too often, £180,000, and it's not just for the actual changing of the site, there's other things such as project management and the and um, giving money to the locals to make sure their post doesn't go missing and everything. It's, it's, a, it's a broad thing, but over, overarchingly, it's £180,000 collect, at least actually £189,000 collectively. In a cost of living crisis, that's unforgivable. In a cost of living crisis in Harringay, which has a range of very serious issues, it's completely unforgivable. It's completely, it's, it's completely atrocious. But additionally, too, if I give you another example, the street that I live on, the, the street sign is so battered, you can't even see it. Right. You can't even see it. And you would have thought, so quite literally, I'm gathering my daughter and the children in my area together so we can repaint the actual street sign ourselves. And we'll probably do it for about 50 quid or so. And um, because the, the council isn't going around seeing these things or looking at them or so, they're trying to chase these headlines or whatever whatever their objective is, I really don't know. But this right here, and I get it. And I'll give you, for example, um, Joe Ejiofo is a friend of mine. He's the former leader of the council who came up with this idea. I just don't think that this was where our priorities as a community, particularly on the on the disadvantaged side of Harringay, on the mm. east side of Harringay, I don't think this is anywhere near where our priority should be. Now, when the, the, please. You're talking about kind of a dereliction of responsibility from the council. You're talking about the borough being really segregated. My question to you, and I appreciate we've only got a minute here, but my question to you is what do you think should happen next? Where do we go from here? You've got a sign that's been vandalised. It's been cleaned. I mean, enough to suggest that it's going to happen again. You've got you residents of the street putting up their own street names in absolute revolt and a bit of a middle finger to the council. What, where do we go from now instead of this turning into a full-scale, um, I don't know, revolt from the residents? I thought your question was going to be, why do you continue to live there? Um, but I think, that, I think that that's, <laughs> no, pro- no, no. that's possibly... But, but that is possibly the question that so many people are asking themselves, that why do I tolerate this? That why do I tolerate this and why do I continue to live here? And there some people are moving in, some people are just simply moving out. Um, but, but I think, where do we go from here? If I was... I think that leadership the area, not the council itself, leadership of the area is going to have to be taken away from the council. By that, I don't mean actual political leadership. I mean the the desire to create a cohesive community of people mm-hmm. where we can come together and make sure that we work together and create a community which has been torn apart by so many different things. The LTN is tearing us apart. Um, the Black Boy Lane thing is actually quite minor compared to what's going on with the, with the LTNs, but it's tearing things apart. I just feel that the social cohesion that is so important to living with people, to seeing your neighbour and feeling uh, some warmth and wanting to smile at them or so, is being decimated by the council, who often behave in a deeply, deeply, deeply divisive, and there are things from time to time, irresponsible manner. So it's a whole whole new council for you, Nels. Not a new council. I, I don't. I actually don't. I've lost faith in the concept of. Um, in, I've lost faith in the ability or the concept of, of council itself. I think well, it has to be a new model for Harringay with leadership, okay. where people can come in together and speak together. Nels, it, we need to have a longer conversation, but I've got to run to the news. Thank you for your time. Let's get the latest. Under-